Finally, we will wrap things up right here in the historic town of Donaldsonville. Just like Fort Jessup near Toledo Bend, water plays a significant role in military strategy for a young and growing United States. This Mississippi River town had a Union fort during the Civil War that played a major role in keeping Confederate troops from advancing. Almost everywhere you turn, you can see the history of Donaldsonville and Louisiana if you know who to talk to and where to look. The historic town of Donaldsonville is made up of a mysterious founding father, a forgotten military fort, a history-making mayor, and music. Local historian Kirk Landry helps us sort it all out. So Kirk, what's in the name? How did Donaldsonville get its name? Well, there was this gentleman by the name of William Donaldson who was a visionary, and uh, he was a legislator, a banker, uh, and he, he was a city planner and city builder and he his vision was to build a town that would one day become the capital of the state of Louisiana. Evidence of William Donaldson's work is everywhere but if you're looking for a picture, a statue or even some of the most basic of information on Donaldson, Kirk says you'll have to keep looking. Well, we know William Donaldson, uh, as I said, we, what we don't know is where he was born. We, he, we know he was of English descent. We don't know if he was born uh, here in the States or if he was born uh, across the pond in, in England. Uh, we know he passed away in 1813. We don't know where he's buried. Uh, so there's a lot of work left to do on, uh, on William Donaldson. In 1806, Donaldson commissioned Bartholomew Lafon, a successful New Orleans city architect, to draw up the city plan. LaVille de Donaldson was incorporated in March of 1813. William Donaldson died six months later. Even though we don't know much about William, the town of Donaldsonville overflows with history. Donaldsonville is the third oldest city in the state of Louisiana, has the second largest historic district only after the French Quarter. In fact, many people may not know Donaldsonville was once the state capital. This is what the capital looked like in 1830. But just like the founding father, no trace of the state capital remains. Legislators complained about the building leaking, and Deville did not have the same pizzazz as working in New Orleans. By 1831, lawmakers returned to the Big Easy, and the Donaldsonville capital was demolished. The bricks were dumped in the bayou for added protection from flooding. Thirty-three years later, civil war broke out. Bayou Lafourche connected the Gulf of Mexico and the Mississippi River, and Donaldsonville was a contested strategic position. During the Civil War, Union troops built a fort right here and named it Fort Butler. Troops were made up of mostly freed slaves. Now, even though there's very little signs left of this earthen fort, the real story of the Battle of Fort Butler lies just below the surface. Kirk, tell me about this site. Well, what we're standing on is a very historic site. Probably we're right in the middle of what once, what was once Fort Butler, okay. uh, a Union fort here in Donaldsonville, which there was a battle June 28, 1863, where Confederate forces led by General Tom Green attacked the fort. Probably anywhere from 800 to 1,200 Confederate forces led by Green attacked the fort, defended by 187 uh, men from the 28th Maine and a, a number of free men of color who successfully defended that fort in one of the Civil War's only nighttime battles. Hundreds of dead Confederate soldiers lay underneath in a mass grave. All that is left now are markers commemorating the Battle of Fort Butler. Many might think the roots of jazz began with Louis Armstrong, but Louis got his start with a musician named Joe King Oliver. And this king was born just a mile away from Donaldsonville in the community of Avend. We're very, very proud to say that jazz history uh, may have originated right here in Donaldsonville and Avend. 
Kathy Hambrick is the curator of the River Road African American Museum. Over three centuries of rural African American history is preserved at their museum in downtown Donaldsonville. Inside, King Oliver shares space with a past Donaldsonville mayor. This man, Pierre Landry, made history in 1868 when he was elected the first African American mayor in the United States. He was sold as a slave at age, at age 13 for $1,665. Um, he was taught how to read and write on the plantation. And you don't hear very many stories about that because you think that everyone who was enslaved was illiterate and unable to read and write. And he was able to read and write. He was able to get himself to law school. He became a lawyer. He was one of the leading people in the country who was an advocate for educating African Americans after emancipation. And um, I'm just very, very proud to say that he was from Donaldsonville. The historic setting of Donaldsonville is also making a name for itself in the movies. Over the years, Louisiana's third oldest city has been the backdrop to several movies, including All the King's Men, and the curious case of Benjamin Button. Aspiring actor and Donaldsonville native Richard Zerang has even worked with Tommy Lee Jones as a dialect coach. At any time did Tommy Lee Jones look at you and say, how do you say that again? <laughs> no, but I could tell he was, uh, a couple of times I would say something and it was, it was his assistant who was driving and he was sitting in the, uh, in the front on the driver's side and I was sitting in the back talking. And a couple of times I would say something, he would just look over at the assistant and <laughs> kind of give a little smile. And, and of course I knew what he was smiling about, but you know, it's, uh, uh, so be it. Yeah. <laughs> but but it, was, it was fun. And Richard, just like Kathy and Kirk, all see a promising future for Donaldsonville, a future that holds a firm grasp on the past. And it's been fun showing off LaVille de Donaldsonville to others. And when I saw their interest, it all of a sudden started, you know, getting my interest. And, and then, you know, I, I became more aware of it and, and, and kind of, I guess, in some ways, been an ambassador for Donaldsonville uh, with the film industry and all. Not trying to be, but just I can't help but when they come in to tell them about the city. Oh, gosh. Uh, probably one of the best kept secrets regarding history in in Louisiana today. There's no other museum in the entire world that's preserving this history. So with Louisiana being number one in tourism, and I do still believe that we are number one, even considering that Katrina has taken its toll on us, I believe that there needs to be a place where people who come from around the world to learn about the history of African Americans, that there's one place where they can do their research, there's one place where they can see the artifacts and the documents. And of course, doing oral histories up and down the River Road, uh, it seems that all roads led to Donisonville. <laughs> Education is a vital part of the mission and vision of the River Road African American Museum. The museum is open all year round and offers educational programs and tours that highlight the three centuries of history, legacy, and importance of African Americans to the growth of the South. For more information, you can go online at AfricanAmericanMuseum.com. And that will do it for this, our fifth edition of Lost Louisiana, What's in a Name? Can you believe it's been 25 towns now? Man, we are just warming up. If you have a suggestion for a Louisiana town with an unusual name, please drop us a line. You can contact us at lpb.org. I hope you've enjoyed this time roaming around the Louisiana countryside. For my photographer, Vernado Woods, I'm Charlie Winnell, and I hope to see you again for another edition of Lost Louisiana. <laughs>